Hey everybody, Professor Pendergrass here, and I am going to show you in this little video how to use Desmos to do some of the numerical calculations involved with average rates of change. So let's uh, take a look. Let's see, um, the basic formula that we're dealing with here is the one for average rates of change, right? So the average rate of change of some function f on an interval from a to b is given by this little uh, expression, which is called the difference quotient. So in any given situation, finding an average rate of change means just, you know, finding out what your function f is, what interval you're interested in, and then computing this quantity, which would be the average rate of change of your function on that interval. Um, so let's see how that might work with respect to a problem. And I'm just going to use a problem in the book here. Let's see. Um, yeah, like number 20 and 21. Let's take a look at these. Uh, this says, uh, it says, the, the, consider a rocket shot in the air that returns to Earth. The height of the rocket in meters is given by this formula. Okay, so that is another um formula where t is measured in seconds. So this would be the time, t is the time in seconds after launch. And they want us to compute the average velocity over these given time intervals. And you see four of them here. Um, one thing that I would uh, want to point out here is that all those time intervals you noticed are focused near t equals nine seconds. And we're going to see that that's actually uh, an important uh, idea along the way towards the concept of instantaneous rate of change. But uh, but anyway, in this particular case, let's go ahead and just uh, look at the average rates of change. So we've got our formula. It's h of t here, and then we need we have these intervals uh, that we want to uh, compute average rates of change over. Uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, Desmos is really good at. So I'm going to go up here and get myself a new Desmos window. All right. And uh, to compute these rates of change using Desmos, the first thing that you want to do is just enter the function in. So let me remind myself of the function. It's this guy right here, right? H of t is 600 plus 78.4 t minus 4.9 t squared. Let's see if I can remember that, 678.4. So just enter that, 600 minus 78.4, sorry, plus 78.4 t minus 4.9 times uh, t squared. Let me see if I got that right. So 600 plus 78.4 T minus 4.9 T squared and 600 plus 78.4 T minus 4.9 times T squared. So it looks like I've got my function in there correctly. And uh, now notice the problem. We have actually four different intervals that we want to compute average rates of change over. Uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, can be very tedious if you're doing it by hand, especially since there's four of them. But let's uh, let's use Desmos. So again, let me pop back over here to Desmos. Uh, the, the, the key idea uh, in using Desmos to do this is to use the table feature of Desmos. That is, you can insert a little table into Desmos and then use that pretty easily to calculate exactly what we want. So let me show you how to do that. Um, let's see, let's go back here. So uh, uh, click down, give yourself another input line for Desmos and go over here to the plus uh, button, add item. And look at the third item in the list. Click on it and then look at this third item here. It says table. Let's enter that. So that puts a very simple table in our list. Uh, the columns are labeled X1 and Y1. And you're just, and then it's prompting us for information to add to the table. The first thing I'm going to do is, uh, as I'm going to change those column uh, labels, basically the idea here is I want to use this formula, right? I already know what my function is. That's my H that we, but we need our A and our B here in order to put together this formula. A is the 
the beginning of our interval, B is the ending of our interval. So uh, let's change these two columns. The first one, let's call A, not X1. The second one, let's call B, not X2. And in, then in the third one, let's go ahead and enter the difference quotient. So I'm going to, uh, you know, you can use the little keyboard here on Desmos if you like. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I need a uh, fraction. I need to divide something, right? So I put hit the divide key. And then uh, now my function is named H. Uh, so I, I want to use H as opposed to F, right? Even though the definition says F here, my function is called H. So I'm going to use H here. So in the top, it should be H of B minus h of a, and in the bottom, it should just be b minus a. So those are my headers. And now I'm ready to enter in the, the intervals that I want. So like uh, going back uh, to the uh, problem, the first interval was what? From 9 to 9.01. So let's go ahead and enter that in. My a is 9, and my b is 9.01. And there you see it, my... Uh, my uh, Third column in my table is giving me that average rate of change. The three decimal places, it's minus 9.849. Um, and then, uh, you know, you could do the uh, others just as easily. Uh, for instance, let's see, where were we? Um, the second interval is 8.99 to 9. So my A now would be 8.99. My B is nine, and there you get another. So the the rate of change is slightly different here, isn't it? From eight point nine nine to nine, it's minus nine point seven five one. Uh, from nine to nine point oh one, it's minus nine point eight four nine. Slightly different. Uh, but in, in any case, you know, we can just go ahead and knock all these out real quickly. Uh, for part C, we need nine to nine point zero zero one. So I can just add that as a row. And there you have uh, that. And then uh, in the last part, we wanted 8.999 up to nine. And there we have that rate of change. So uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, all those numbers, uh, first of all, all the A's and B's have something to do with nine, right? They're all very close, all those, intervals are very close around the value nine. So we're, we're calculating average rates of change around nine in various different ways. And those average rates of change, you know, uh, depend on the exact interval we're calculating them over, of course, but they're all around negative 9.8, right? And, you know, what we're going to be doing pretty soon is saying, well, what would they act if I could take this to the limit, right? Like if I could go from 8.99999 all the way up to nine, what would the rate of change be? Well, you can see still looks like it's getting pretty close to negative 9.8. Uh, uh, the idea that we're, we're, we're uh, sort of uh, working our way towards here is the idea that if you look at instant at average rates of change on intervals very close to some specific number, that's a good approximation to the instantaneous rate of change at that number. So, uh, like I was saying here, the uh, you know if we had to in, uh, estimate the instantaneous rate of change of this function at t equals nine. I would estimate that it's about not negative 9.8. Now, I'm not sure how accurate that estimate is, and we'll have to talk about that. But eventually, we'll get to the point where we can get it exactly. We'll be able to find out exactly what that instantaneous rate of change is as a limit of average rates of change as that interval sort of shrinks down to nine or whatever number that we're looking for. So that's it for this little video. I just hope it uh, helps you solve some of the problems on the homework in an easy way. And as always, if you have questions, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help out if I can. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you all very much.